to that question. That is how we want that. Then the other part we are going into. Yodhyasma Juhurana Menam. So there I had split it. Yodhi Asmat Juhuranam Yenam. So that itself makes one sentence, one idea. The other part is Bhuyishtam Te Nama Uktim Vidhema, that is another part. So in this second part, we are making it into two sub parts. Yodhyasma Juhurana Menam. So, Juhuranam Yenam. Asmat Yuyodhi, that's the aspect. Now, Yenam, that is Inagatav, that's the root I have told you. And Inagatav means that which moves. Now here, Yenam is that which moves us or that which takes us towards sin is called as Yenam. So, yena means sin, bad deeds, those deeds which are not beneficial either to us or to the society. Those things which jeopardize our comfort and happiness and peace. So, all that comes in that yena. And this yena is always juhurana. Juhurana, I have told you, hurcha kautilye. That is cricket. Now the thing that is behind a sin is a cricket mind, a cricket thought. So Juhara and Aminam, they go together. It's the cricket mind and the cricket mind makes us involved in cricket actions. That is nothing but sinful acts. Juhara and Aminam. Now it's a prayer, as I've been telling with God, with the Chidananda, that when we have got such cricket mind and when we have got cricket thoughts and when these cricket thoughts take us towards sin, towards bad deeds, then asmat, that is from us, asmat is from us, panchami vibhakti. So in this panchami vibhakti, whenever you use it, it means from from, from is the thing what it has a preposition. So from us, Yodhi. That Yodhi have told you the root is Yu Mishrana Mishrane. Mishrana is to fuse, to mix. Amishrana is to separate. Mishrana is to integrate. Amishrana is to disintegrate. Both meanings are there for that you. It is to mix, it is to separate. Now, which one you have to take? It depends upon the context. The meaning is short listed to two, to mix and to separate. Now, here he is speaking of the cricket thoughts and cricket actions. And from is there. So, in this you, which one you have to take? It is obvious that you have to take the other part. That is the separation. So, oh God, knowingly or unknowingly, Lot of cricket thoughts are there and these cricket thoughts have been making us indulge in cricket actions. So please separate them from us. Let the cricket thoughts go away from us. So this is the prayer. Let me not be subject to cricket thoughts because the cricket thoughts once I have them in me, then it results in cricket actions. Papa, sin. So if I want to avoid sinful actions, the best way is to remove these sinful thoughts. So let these sinful thoughts go away from me. Yuyoti, let them go. Let them get separated from me. Asmat from us. Yodhi, Asmat, Juhuranam, Yenam. This is a heartfelt prayer. This is a heartfelt prayer. It's not just a chanting from the throat. It's a heartfelt prayer. Only then we can take the right path. Otherwise, we'll always be treading the cricket path and we get into a lot of uh, entanglements and problems. Because that's the nature of the cricket path. 
we get lost in the maze of crookedness so if you want to be out of it yes the cricket parts must go and there's a prayer here yodhi asmat juhurana menam so finally we are going to bhuvishtham te nama uktim vidhema nama is i told you nama prahvatve that is to be humble and humility with all the humbleness o sachidananda i know my limitations you are omnipotent of course i have got potency but not that level you are omniscient yes i also know certain things but not to the level you have got so in any way look at it sachidananda is always supreme and superior and compared to that yes we are at a lower rank so i know my limitations so i always surrender to you i always look forward to you for guidance and other things and you are my guide and mentor and everything teacher everything so with that understanding i am humble and with that humility i pray to you nama uktim uktim is the word what i utter the words what i chant the prayers what i make everything comes in the uktim vacha paribhashane that is to speak so my words my prayers everything it all comes into that mukti te te means prayer to you your prayers words directed towards you words addressed to you all those things what i do is bhuishtham vidhema bhuishtham the root is bhu satayam that which exists so my words exist my prayers exist it's all there and here we say bhuishtham so i want to grammar we have got what is known as a suffix ishtan so the bhu satayam that ishtan suffix is added ishtan so when i say ishtan it means atishaya in that sense ishtan is added anything atishaya means more and more and more that's what it means in simple words you can see exaggerate expand okay what your prayers have got they are not just prayers they are all exalted exaggerated prayers i pray again and again and again more and more and more so if this sense is there that ishtan suffix is attached to bhu so it becomes bhu ishtam so they are not just prayers i pray to you again and again and again whole heartedly and this vidhema all these prayers is not just external it's internal and i all take it into my heart and have it in my inner recesses vidhema dudhai dharana poshanayo i take them into my heart hold them in my heart and nourish them so my prayers are to you and these prayers are not just prayers but these are done again and again and again with emphasis and it is not external yes all these prayers are in me in my heart and i hold them i nourish them bhuishtam te nama uktim vidhe and all say do with all humility with all humbleness now we have got uh, the meaning of every word in the mantra and we got some uh, chair about what the mantra is telling agne naya supatha raye asman vishwani deva vayunani vidwan yodhi asmat juhuranam enam bhuishtham te nama muktim vidhema okay sir ma ji i have read once or two all these uh, uh, words their dhatus and the interrelationship between these words and the total meaning of the whole mantra 
if you do it again and again if you study it again and again at one point of time as i told you last time every word in the mantra becomes alive jumping and you will be able to experience every word every word becomes alive they are not dead words they are not just letters they are not just sounds they have got something to convey and what it is trying to convey is very sublime is very heart touching is very noble this you will experience when you chant it again and again of course having the emphasis on its meaning and what it conveys and the interrelationship between them so this is one step now to delve deep into the mantra that's the last level okay sharma ji one question words are okay words are conveying something that's fine okay, okay. now after what we have understood the meaning of the mantra then we go into its essence we go into its essence we go deep into it and finally experience still more sublime things and it needs a lot of pondering over it this what is called as dhyana so i have to do dhyana on this mantra so once we do our meditation once we meditate upon this mantra a yes, lot of other things will reveal themselves for us the only thing is we should work without prejudice and we should work with an open heart things will happen so what is this say we call it as samskara samskara means uh, impressions imprints impressions and imprints lot of impressions and imprints will be there on the soul on the soul and these imprints or impressions are not of one birth are not of this one single birth our journey is through several births birth and death and birth and death this is a cycle in which we are in so this is one such birth we have a lot of other births we have gone through death several times and you go back lot of things in the earlier births including this birth also we have experienced through our sense organs and our sharira indriya manas lot of things now all those impressions will be carried forward on the atma to the next birth so in this birth we have carried forward lot of things from the previous birth lot of impressions now these impressions we cannot ensure that they are all positive we cannot ensure that they are all good maybe may not be. to be honest and to be realistic yes it's a mix of both we do have good impressions at the same time we do have bad impressions now at this juncture that is in the present birth now we are trying to analyze them we work back into the soul we work back, back into the soul and this inner journey is what is called as yoga so we work in so when you start working in try to evaluate what all the impressions or imprints what we have got on our soul then uh, maybe in the modern terminology we can say it is mapping of this soul so when you map the soul yes you will be able to understand so many things and identify the good impressions and the dirty impressions now once you are able to map it then our next endeavor shall be to enhance to emphasize the good impressions and to snub the bad impressions and wash them out so when you do this process internally it's not an external process it's an internal process what i have to do during our meditating time so when you do so the soul becomes strong stronger and the soul becomes pure and purer this is a process now the soul which is pure and strong will have the capacity to experience bliss to experience peace to experience ananda and that is the ultimate goal of every such chit so for doing this we have got certain obstacles that is very important thing obstacles now these obstacles are nothing but juhurana meena the cricket nature this cricket nature will not allow us to go straight will not make us to be transparent will not make us take the right royal way it always pulls and pushes us into the crossroads 
and it says that if you take the crossroads a shortcut you can do things fast you can do this that all these attractions are there okay. all these promises are there but unfortunately if you fall in prey to it none of the promises will be fulfilled that is our aspect of it. but as a common man as a common man what happens is we immediately fall in prey to these uh, promises similar to as we fall in prey to all the advertisements what we see in the media so that they advertise so many things they promise us so many things and finally they may their hate and we will be cheated ultimately nothing will happen now the same thing also happens here in the uh, market of philosophy so they want to commercialize this philosophy and they want to distract us and finally make their hate but if you are really cautious if you are really careful such a thing can never happen so have to be very careful one single principle we have to follow however difficult it may be we shall always take the right royal path that's the thing and however lucrative it may be we are not taking the cross road we should be firm about it then we are saved then we are saved so that's what it that is says juhrana menan is cricket path which is very lucrative which is very attractive which promises wonderful things but unfortunately once we get into the crossroads we are lost in the maze miss so once you are lost in the maze we will be revolving within it will be moving here and there here and there here and there. we will never find the path out that's the maze we are caught in it we are caught in a whirlpool we cannot come out of it so you should be very careful very careful and that's what exactly this mantra says it is training ourselves it is telling ourselves please don't take anything that is cricket don't think cricketly don't do cricket acts you say for yourself be straight and the word for being straight that also i already told you it's called ruju 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 is that a vowel ruju tulak that is the ruju ruju marga are the path of ruta the path of ruta or rujmarga they are straight forward royal routes maybe while taking this route there could be little slowing down doesn't matter at all they are sure to reach the goal but you take the cross road it may be fast but you never reach the goal that's a problem now this actually a turning point in everybody's life at every step when you have to take a decision you will always be having two options one is a fast option one is a slow option but the slow option is associated with the right royal route and the right goal whereas the other path though it is fast though it is lucrative it never takes us to the goal so our decision has to be very right at every step we have to be cautious we should never be caught this is a very important thing so to be careful to be alert and if you are not to be caught then this mantra has to be chanted again and again and again and that warns us please be careful cricket thoughts will mislead you don't get into it don't get into it so this warning i take for myself by chanting this mantra of course with meaning so i merely chant it mechanically this will not happen this will not happen and i will not be able to feel it also so we have to always be careful about this then we all have to be wealthy we all have to be rich we all have to be affluent poverty is never recommended by vedas and poverty is not simplicity i tell it once again there is always a confusion when i say simplicity oh the person is poor that's how they think poverty and simplicity are not the same basic difference between poverty and simplicity poverty is i am in a state where i cannot afford and i am in a state 
but in simplicity i can afford but still i choose to be in this condition now that is simplicity number one then in simplicity what you do is whatever is necessary whatever is essential only to that level i will have my material collections mm-hmm. i will have my monday level so once i reach that necessary level then i stop i will not acquire further wealth i will not acquire further resources now this is simplicity so if you are able to understand the difference between these two that uh, simplicity and poverty things are very different that is not confused between the two there's a lot of difference between them so when we lead such a way of life yes we can meditate more we can think about these things more because a lot of time and energy will be saved but a totally materialistic life and one acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and gaining wealth and wealth then things will not work out because the whole life will be lost in that and that spirituality or attaining a higher level of strength or purity for the soul will be missed so you should be very careful and in the rare opportunity what we got as human beings so wealth is required we are not against wealth and we have to restrict the wealth what we earn voluntarily it's not because of poverty because they cannot afford i am in this state no i can afford still i want to be in this state that's what we have to understand and even that the means are equally important i have take only the upa i have to be careful i will not tell a lie i will not cheat or i will not misrepresent and earn my money i will not earn it by force i will earn it in the right royal way in a very very transparent way and whatever taxes i have to pay i will pay it happy there is question of tax evasion there is no question of accumulating black money nothing i do everything straight open honest now this is upatha so please uh, just imagine for a while if people get into this mode if people orient themselves to this type of a earning more then how the world will be how this society will be but it is so excellent it is so excellent it is so tax free and we can believe in anyone you see that's the thing that is we work by heart we don't work with brain of course brain and heart they have to work with them there but heart should take the front row and the brain should follow it this is that's what happens and of course many a time in certain junctures yes brain will move ahead and take the heart along with it but heart and brain working together is what we need and that is that supatha so this we have to analyze this we have to meditate and understand what it is saying and we pray god Oh God, please help me do this. Please motivate me to take this path. Please help me to orient, reorient myself to these things. And it is not a dry prayer. I told you, prarthana vai chankalpa. So whatever prayer is there, this prayer has to be converted into determination and the determination is converted into practice, action. Then things will work out. So this is simple explanation beyond the meaning what we have got meaning is a straight and direct one and when you go deep into it these things will unfold themselves the only things you have to meditate upon and it's not that this is end of it more and more we meditate more and more we get into it yes lot of things will reveal themselves for us and our whole life will undergo a great transformation at uh, this point what i'm telling is same for all the veda mantras it not be this one single veda mantra every veda mantra is directed at transformation directed at purity directed at strengthening the our souls so this one mantra i have taken for an example uh, requested by shanti bhagini and we are through it and the only now available thing the next part what we have to do is this mantra we have to chant and chant and chant and ponder over it chant and chant and think about it chant and chant and meditate upon it yes so many things will happen so many things will happen and definitely it brings some transformation in us sometimes if you are very serious the transformation also will be very fast 
Leicester series slowly has the transformation. So that is a relationship between our seriousness and transformation. And whatever transformation that happens is for the better, that much is certain. There is no doubt about it. And where we are and where we will be, definitely that next step will be better. We will have greater purity of hearts. We will have greater strength for our souls. So this we have to bear in mind. And uh, of course, there are many such mantras. We have made a good beginning with this. And uh, we will have the study of dhatus, and we will have the study of uh, the pieces of Veda mantras. And at the same time, we will also get into studying the whole mantra as we have done for this. And of course, the way we have to analyze uh, the whole mantra and the dhatus and interlinking them and looking at them in a holistic way, in a comprehensive way, I think I have got a feel with this one example. Okay, this feeling you will have it again and again when you go into studying of the whole mantras. There are many such mantras. And uh, thank you very much 